The King, the Princess, and the Tinker by Ellen Kent Mackenzie, illustrated by William Lowe, Chapter 2. Princess Sweet Rosilla Princess Sweet Rosilla did not think it was too bad. She had never known anything different in her life. If her father did not tickle her neck with his chin whiskers or bounce her on his knee or give her sweets that she knew she should not eat, or make lovely shivers go down her back with her stories of ogres and witches. Well, the livery men, the butler, the cook, and the general, and her own kind governess did it all for her. Besides all that, her brothers took turns galloping her around the castle on their back, and letting her win great pretend battles with cotton swords and spears starched to stiffness by the laundress. Everyone loved Princess Sweet Rosilla, for she was light-hearted, full of high spirits, and always quick to reward any favor with the warmest of hugs and kisses. Her laughing, her laughter rang through the castle and set everyone in the castle laughing as well. That is, everyone but her father. He sat alone behind a closed door in the tower, too far away to hear her laughter. Princess Sweet Rosilla brings sunshine to the castle on the dreariest of days, the governess was wont to say to the cook. I, the cook would say, she's a merry one. And as sweet as her name, and as pretty, the laundress would chime in. And almost as good, the governess would add, but I fear everyone spoils her in every way a person can think of. It's true, she always has what everyone thinks she might like to have. But how do we know it's what she wants? I say she's a good princess, for she never screams or pouts or demands to have her way, argued the cook. So if she's spoiled, she doesn't know it. The laundress agreed with the cook, adding, and she never is really naughty, for she hates to be scolded. All of this was almost, but not quite true. For merry and sweet and pretty and good as she was, no one ever knew there was one thing the Princess Sweet Rosilla did that was quite naughty. Rather, it was something she would not do. Close your eyes, Princess, her governess governess would say. Your own dear father is coming to see how you are growing. The governess would bow her head and close her eyes. But it seemed to Princess Sweet Rosilla that to close her eyes for even a minute, except to sleep at night, would be to miss what she what might be the most important minute of her life. So she felt she must always keep at least one of them open all day long, every day of the year. Of course, she was never scolded for doing this, for who could see that she had at least one eye open when she shouldn't have? Each year when King John came from his tower, All of the servants stood aside with their heads bowed and their eyes closed. The six princes closed their eyes and bent their heads and stood in a line, the oldest of them holding the hand of the king's winsome daughter. Not one of the servants saw the king. Not one of the princes looked at his father as King John squinted at them and felt the tops of their heads and marked the wall to measure them. As for King John, he squinted so badly from the brightness of the jewels that he saw as little of his sons as they did of him. And though he patted her head, he never noticed the brightness of Princess Sweet Rosilla's eye as it peeped between her fingers. The years passed, and the time came for the once in five years that King John would come down from his high tower treasure room to enter the coach and drive out to see how his country was doing. I will go forth tomorrow, the king told the general, who stood before him with his eyes closed. Prepare the royal coach. See that the curtains fit tightly across the windows so that no one can look at me. Command the five thousand foot soldiers to be ready to march behind the coach. They must behead anyone who dares to look upon my royal self. The general bowed and then humbly asked a favor of King John. The soldiers need new boots, he said. There is no money to pay for them because all the money is in the royal treasury. Will you give me some coins to buy them? Coins, roared the king. No. But they cannot march barefoot and keep up with the royal coach, argued the general bravely. How can they keep unworthy people from looking at you? King John thought about this. At last he grudgingly gave the general nine coins for the soldiers' boots. 
But they must take care that those boots last a lifetime, growled the king. And woe to the soldier who scuffs the toes, for if he does, I shall have him beheaded. And that's the end of chapter two.